In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Greetings, beloved of the Lord, and welcome to today's edition of Catholic Meditation. Today is Monday, the 10th of October, 2022. It is Monday of the 28th week in Ordinary Time, Church Year C. I am Father Blessed Ambang Njume. Good morning and thanks for joining us. Let us pray. May your grace, O Lord, we pray at all times, go before us and follow after, and make us always determined to carry out good works. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. The first reading is taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians, chapter 4, verses 22 to 24, verses 26 and 27, and verses 31 to chapter 5, verse 1. The responsorial psalm is taken from Psalm 113. The response to the psalm is, May the name of the Lord be blessed forevermore. The gospel is taken from St. Luke, chapter 11, verses 29 to 32. I read from the first reading. Brethren, it is written that Abraham had two sons, one by a slave and one by a free woman. But the son of the slave was born according to the flesh, the son of the free woman through promise. Now, this is an allegory. These women are two covenants. One is from Mount Sinai, bearing children for slavery. She is Hagar, but the Jerusalem above is free, and she is our mother. For it is written, Rejoice, O barren one who does not bear. Break forth and shout, you who are not with labor pains. For the desolate has more children than she who has a husband. So, brethren, we are not children of the slave, but of the free woman. For freedom, Christ has set us free. Stand fast, therefore, and do not submit again to a yoke of slavery. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The theme for today's meditation is Freedom in Christ is freedom from slavery to sin and freedom to choose and do good. Freedom in Christ is freedom from slavery to sin and freedom to choose and do good. Dear friends in Christ, Often we hear people say, and I suppose you too would have said so at some point, that I am free. I have freedom, and I am free to do whatever I like. This is often said when we feel someone or some people want to determine how we act, or perhaps want to limit our actions. The gift God gave to every human person was the gift of freedom. We are free. We do things out of our own volition, out of our own free will. We are not compelled. We are not forced or coerced. That is what makes us responsible for whatever actions we make because of our freedom, our free will. But the mistake we often do is to mistake licentiousness for freedom. Freedom is not license or laissez-faire or laissez-passer 
to do whatever one likes or wants. True freedom in Christ is freedom from sin. True freedom in Christ is freedom to do and to choose what is good and to do it. Sin enslaves us and we become slaves of the devil. When we are free, we are free from sin and the devil. If you are in sin, you are not free, but a slave, a prisoner held captive by the devil. St. Paul wants us to understand the true meaning of freedom in Christ. Freedom in Christ is freedom from slavery to sin and freedom to choose and do the good. Freedom in Christ is not licentiousness. It is not laissez-passer or laissez-faire to do as you wish. This is what St. Paul explains in this portion of his letter to the Galatians. Christ has set us free. He sets us free from the devil and we are free not to sin, but to do good. So if you say you are free to do sin, then beloved, you are a slave. You are a slave to the devil, a slave to sin. Our freedom won by Christ Jesus is to do good. St. Paul explains this by using an analogy of Abraham's two sons. One born of a slave, that is Ishmael, born of Hagar, and the other born of a free woman, that is Isaac, born of Sarah. Now, we are not descendants of the slave Ishmael, but of the freeborn son Isaac. The son of a slave is a slave, but we are descendants of Isaac, the free son. And that makes us heirs to the promise because the promise was made to Isaac. A slave and descendants of a slave cannot inherit the promise made to the freeborn son. By this, St. Paul explains how free we are. We are descendants of Isaac, born of the free woman, not of Ishmael, born of the slave. We are heirs to the promise. In a second sense, to explain our freedom, St. Paul makes a distinction between love and the law. Ishmael and Hagar represent the covenant of Sinai, which is the covenant of the law. The Jews limited themselves to the law and made themselves prisoners of the law, thinking a person was justified by keeping the law. No wonder they had many problems with Jesus for his failing to keep the law. All the Jews had become prisoners of the law. Oh, you have broken the law according to the law, so, so, and so of the law. They were just keeping the law, making themselves prisoners of the law. How were Hagar and Ishmael the covenant of the law? Abraham had Ishmael to fulfill the law of an heir that was a Jewish custom. But Isaac was born of love to fulfill the promise that God made to Abraham out of love. So he was a child born not of the law, but out of love. We are free because we are not slaves of the law, compelled or coerced by the law, but we are people of love. Even in keeping the law, when we keep the law, it is not because we are forced to do so, but because we keep the law out of love. This is what makes us free. That whatever we do, it's not because we are compelled by the law, but because we do so out of love. If you act because the law compels you, then you are not free. You are a slave of the law. But when you act out of love, you are free. Jesus is the fulfillment of that covenant of love. Out of love, he died on the cross to save us. So we are not prisoners of the law, but children of love. Love is the law. Love is the fulfillment of the law. By this, St. Paul wants us to understand that the law is not meant to enslave us. We should keep the law out of love, 
not out of fear or because we are slaves of it. Now, good people of God, what are the moral and spiritual lessons to draw from this passage of St. Paul's letter to the Galatians? First, do not be a slave of sin. Christ died on the cross to set us free, to purchase us from the hands of Satan, to whom we had become slaves by sin. If you sin and if you are a sinner, it simply means you prefer slavery and you prefer to remain a slave to the devil and to sin. And by implication, you say nonsense to Jesus' salvation that he won for us. Do not be a slave of sin, beloved. Avoid sin because Christ has bought us and has set us free. Second, do not be a slave of the law. Do not keep the law because you are compelled to, because you are forced to. And do not enslave others with the law. The law says, the law says. That explains why Jesus says, the greatest of all laws is the law of love. Do things out of love and you have kept the law, not because you are forced or compelled. And even if others have made mistakes, look at the love of the law, not the letter of the law. Third, let us enjoy the freedom that Christ has won for us. And that freedom means to choose and to do good and to be responsible for whatever actions. Remember, as much as there is freedom, there is responsibility. There is freedom and responsibility. When you act freely, you choose freely and act freely, you must be responsible for the actions that you make. Remember that as you are free and you have freedom in Christ, so too others are free and have freedom in Christ. In exercising your freedom, you should not infringe on the freedoms of others. We are all free because Christ has set us free. Let no man enslave you and do not enslave yourself. For freedom, Christ has bought us and has made us free. And freedom in Christ is freedom from slavery to sin and freedom to choose and do the good. If you avoid sin and you choose and do the good, then, beloved, indeed, you enjoy the freedom that Christ has bought for us. We pray for that grace that we may enjoy the freedom that Christ has won for us by freeing ourselves from sin and by choosing and always doing good. Amen. The Lord be with you. May the blessing of Almighty God, the Father, and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. We wish each and every one of you a blessed new week.